Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make a towel holder. So this would this would clip on over your stove handle. Um, I don't know if you have a stove like me, stainless steel, but uh, your towels slip off all the time. So I made myself one of these and I really, 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 really liked it. So I thought that I would do a tutorial on how to how to make one. You're going to need some buttons. I've got a crap ton of buttons. I'm using, I got my new hooks, my ergonomic hooks, so this is much better. So I am using a number five. I have no letters. I don't know why people even use letters. I don't know what that's about. But I'm using a number five hook. And I'm going to use these two yarns together. So it's going to look like this, but it'll be purple and white. This is two yarns put together. They're, it's really thin yarn. So I put two together and that's how I got this look. You're going to need a needle, of course, and a pair of scissors. So let's get started. It's pretty easy. Oh, and I have a stitch counter here, so um, I'm going to use a stitch counter because the top part is like 17 rows or not a stitch counter, a row counter. Um, it's 17 rows, so if I'm talking, I just don't want to lose track of what's going on. I hope that doesn't get knotted down there. I just threw my balls on the... <laughs> I just threw my balls on the ground. All right. So first things first, obviously. You're going to do a slip knot. So this is awkward. This is going to be very awkward. But we're going to do double crochets. I mean, do your initial slip stitch to connect onto here. And then we're going to do double crochets all the way around. So this is hard. Well, it's not hard. It's awkward. And it's hard not to um, get your tension really tight. So just hold everything pretty loosey-goosey. I'm just trying to go around this piece. These pieces of yarn, so... Everything's all tucked in. I keep thinking I need to hold it up to the camera, but I don't. And I just use my editing. So it's not that difficult to, um, To crochet with two pieces of yarn, it's it's really no different than uh, it gets awkward with these two pieces. I'm trying to keep my work tight, but again, that doesn't matter because I mean you're just gonna have pretty little scalloped looking edges anyway when you're done because you're just gonna jam it all in there. So we're just going to go all the way around the ring doing this till we think we're full. I mean there's no number, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just going around. Oh, what did I do there? Something happened there. It's just going around the ring in a double crochet. Trying to keep it fairly tight, but not too tight that you can't draw anything through. I 
I gave up on trying to hold those two tails down. I'm just going to cut them off. I think they're weaved in enough. They're not going anywhere. I, I did a slip knot anyway, so. It's all good. You can't really screw this up. I mean, tension's important for, you know, what this looks like on the end, but but really, is it because you're just going to bunch this all together anyway? Nobody's really going to be able to tell if it's, if it's loosey-goosey down here or anything. Oh, my one ball just went under my camera tripod, so... If you get knocked around, blame it on my balls. I don't have to worry about being demonetized. I'm not monetized. I don't get paid to do this, so I can be funny and not worry about the consequences from YouTube. So I would say that this ring, I mean, you can you can decide how big of a ring. I actually like the elastic ring, the elastic that I did the other night for my own kitchen because I actually have to kind of open it up a bit to put the towel in there and it really, really, really holds on well. Not that this one doesn't. This one holds on too because the towel doesn't slide against the fabric. But um, I like the elastic just because... You know, it really holds on to it. Elastic's going to be obviously harder than this type of a ring to, to double crochet around. But uh, in the end, you get something that looks really cool. So, Oh, I'm not sure what happened there, but I can't even, I can't even get my hook out. Anyway, there's lots of sizes that you get with the package that you buy from. This is a, a size that's perfect to fit a towel into. Um, and you get a few of those. And then you get ones that are a little bit bigger. And then you get really, really big ones, which you can, you know, do um, a tree of life or, I don't know, something. I actually did a tree of life in in one this size and it turned out really good so maybe I'll do a video for you guys that's the tree of life that I did and it turned out really well and and I'm pretty sure oh no it's about the same same size that I'm using now so it turned out really well anyway moving on off topic Now you don't have to put two pieces of yarn together like I am. Um, I just like the look of it. But if you have a color, obviously, for your kitchen. Like the one I did for my kitchen is red because my kitchen and dining room, they're, they're red. My pots and pans are red. My plates and bowls and my cups, they're all red. So I, I used red, but... Um, you know, not too many people have purple kitchens, even though I wish I had a purple kitchen. That would be cool. Sorry. I'm trying to get my ball out from underneath the tripod. Um, I wish I had a purple kitchen, but I don't. Um, but some people don't even have colors. That's why I thought the brown and white would be good. So some people don't have really a color to their kitchen. But we've somehow adopted this red 
It all started with uh, red plates. So anyway, I just did plain red. You could choose whatever color. You don't have to put two pieces of yarn together and, you know, try to crochet with, which it's fine. It, there's no different crocheting with these two pieces than there is one piece. It's, there's no difference at all. So... So when you start closing the gap, just keep pushing it open because you really want to jam as many double crochets in there as you can. And that what that's going to do is, let's try that again, I lost a piece. What that's going to do, jamming them down, is give this, this waved edge. Because if you leave it like this, obviously there's, it's just going to lay flat. That's your choice if you'd prefer it. But I want to, you know, put more of a scallopy edge on it. So I'm just going to push them all down as I'm going. And get as many in there as I possibly can. And, and really, if you're using one piece of yarn, you could probably use a smaller hook. You don't have to use a five like me. I'm just using a five because that's my favorite size hook. <laughs> I use five for a lot of projects. I don't know what I keep doing there, but... I use five for a lot of projects. Sorry, I had to pull all my yarn. <laughs> pull some yarn up. I just got them rolling around on the floor. My cat, nowhere in sight, thankfully. There's plenty, plenty of videos on YouTube on how to make these. So ignore that. It's my coffee pot. Speaking of coffee, I'm gonna have a sip. This is generally a faster project, but I'm going slower for the video, obviously. But uh, when you do it, it's probably going to be a faster project for you. So just when you think you're coming to the end, pull your pull your uh, your stuff all back and just keep jamming them in there. Oh, here comes my dog. Gotta be nosy. Wondering who I'm talking to. He's 
just looking out the front window to see whose car is here. And nobody here, Poppy Pants. I wonder what goes through his mind. Hi. Yeah, I'm talking to the camera. Don't step on my yarn. Great big boxer. He's pretty good at where he walks, but he is a great big boxer. If anybody's watched my channel long enough, you've you've met Harley. Can you get off my yarn, buddy? Yes, I know you need attention. He's neurotic. His daddy's made him neurotic. Yes, you are. Get to walk. Let me kiss it. Thank you, good boy. Okay. You go lay down somewhere, please. Be a good boy. You're probably not going to find this channel to be too professional you know I've watched some other channels and you know they're they're very professional they don't make mistakes they're very scripted and very you know TV show like ish I'm not all about that I mean yeah I could do it I could have a set you know I could have a craft room where I sit and I have a backdrop behind me and I can talk to the camera and I can you know, do all that stuff too, but really that's not real life. You know, the people, subs I want to, I want to talk to the people that are following my videos. Not that they don't talk, they do talk, and some talk a lot, but, you know, it's, I don't know. I just find it too scripted. And some people, you know, you just want to, I don't know why, why is this tight again? Some people um, I've watched where I've gone on and I have to wait for 10 minutes worth of an intro of them rambling on about stuff. Some are very high pitched and hyper. Um, that gets my anxiety going. Um, and then 10 minutes later, they finally get to the video. Now you guys can say, well, just fast forward. Well, I watched this on an Android box on my TV. I could fast forward, but it's a real pain in the butt trying to get the fast forward button to work, and then I have to drag it forward, and then if I do, if I go too far, then I have to try to drag. It's a real pain to fast forward on an Android box. Um, the fast forward button on the Android box controller just goes forward like 30 seconds so so anyway if you would prefer more professional and less interruptions and you know going off camera because that's what I do I don't have a big setup for my camera it's literally between my legs on a tripod I have to work around it and it's very very difficult not to go off camera I think we're just about coming to the point where we can't stick any more in here And we are going to connect this circle. Alright, one more. There we go. Oh, here's my cat to play with my yarn now. Alright, how about we slip stitch just under that? Because it just wants to grab a hold of that piece for some reason. 
chain one. And we're going to single crochet eight across. Eight. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. And these are just the threads from when I initially started. You can weave them in or just cut them off. And now all we're going to do is go back eight stitches, single crocheting, to 17 stitches. So I'm just going to use my counter. So I've done one, because in the talking process I might uh, forget where I'm at. I doubt it. But you got to count across too. Three, making sure you have eight, five, six, seven, and oh, you're going to be a pain in the bum bum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that was eight. I missed count. I was going to say, why can I not get my stitch in there? My gosh. It's going to be one of those days. Turn your work. I'm just hitting my counter as I go. Just so I know where I'm at. Into the first hole. Salem, stop. Salem, that's my leg. That's not the yarn. That's not the hole I want. There's a hole in there somewhere. I don't know why the ends are so difficult. Chain one, turn your work. So we're doing seventeen rows.
I was determined to rip my skeins apart. Sorry, my camera shut off because it exceeded the time limit. I'm still in the same spot I was. I haven't... It beeped at me, so I knew that it had shut off. So I haven't missed anything. I didn't skip forward. I'm still exactly where you are. Salem, let go of my yarn. usually pretty good for doing what he's told, but... So my counter says we're on row 7. We have 17 to do, so we have 10 more after this. It goes pretty fast because there's only 8 stitches that we're, that we're doing. So... It's a... Uh, fairly decent sized project you know it's not going to take up days of your time or, or whatever and something quick you can do if you wanted to sell some you know if you go to craft shows or if you just want to sell online something quick and you can probably whip up quite a few in uh, in a day you can probably whip up quite a few so um, it's a nice easy project and for the beginners you know you don't want to try something that's that's too out there you know that you're going to struggle with and get frustrated with you know you know just like washcloths there's another easy easy little project or you know you can make little towels finger towels or you know, all these can be sold. You just make sure you get the right kind of material. You want cotton, obviously, for those types of projects. This type of project, you can use whatever you want. Um, you're probably going to wash it every once in a while. So, cotton or acrylic. Stop. Salem, stop. Make me angry now. These, you, you know, your towels just, are just going to be hanging off of. However, and you know, if you use a towel like I do when you're cooking, you get stuff on there. It, you're going to want to wash this every once in a while because stop. Okay, you were not doing what you're told today. My cat is generally better behaved than this. When you tell him to stop, he stops He's like a dog. It's very well trained, but for whatever reason. Oops, sorry, I just bumped you up. Snagging on threads. And you can use, um, you know, leftover yarns, you know, if you've got what, a third of a ball or, actually I don't even think this is a third of a ball, but if you've got, um, you know, yarn that you can't really make anything out of, this is another great project, which you stop. This is another great project to use up your your leftovers you know not enough to make a hat or not enough to you know make a baby booty actually it probably would be enough to make a baby booty but we're on row 11 in case you're not counting I'll count for you I know it's hard to 
to learn and count all at the same time. That's why, you know, if you invest in, uh, what are you stuck on? Come on. You invest in a row counter like I just invested in. What are you getting stuck on? I have no idea what this is getting stuck on. I can't see anything. So we'll just tear it out and start again. There you are. Anyway, it doesn't matter if you've got a pole or two here because it's, for the most part, it's going to be folded over. So it doesn't really matter. This is a project, you know, that you can make mistakes on. And no one's really going to notice it. Oh, finally the cat left the room. Nice and quiet. I don't know about you, but when I watch videos and and I try to follow them, um, I'm watching TV at the same time. So when they're just doing nothing but blathering away, it's very annoying. So I don't want my videos to be annoying. I want you to be able to listen to music, watch TV. You know, hearing my voice every once in a while telling you what row you're on or whatever, but for the most part, I just want to stay decently quiet. Snagged. Snagged on a squirrely piece of yarn. That's what I keep doing. Oh, focus. My snakes. I'm catching ends. Not sure how I'm doing that. I've never done it before, so I'm not sure why. This is a new hook for me. Chain one, two in your work. And now we're on row 14. We're almost there. And then we gotta do a hole and do two more rows. that eight stitches across. There are other videos that you can watch that make an, a nicer a nicer one like they start wider and then they decrease up. Um, this one is just for beginners. I mean if you, if you wanted to um, you know have a nicer looking one. I don't think these look too bad. But uh, you can go check out other, I think these are called um, maybe just towel holders. For some reason, I think there's another name, but but mine's just straight up. I'm not gonna 
you know, worry about teaching you guys decreases and increases or anything right now. That will come later in other projects, I'm sure. And once we progress, right now it's just going to kind of be beginner stuff. Row 16. Last row, 17, this is where we're going to put the hole in, or your button, a button a hole. So depending on the size of the button, obviously, I put a great big button on there just because of the, the, the look of it. I like the look of a big button. So I skipped, because we're doing single crochets, I skipped one, two, three chains. So, and then we do two more rows after, after the buttonhole. So I've got eight. It's not going to be in the center because I'm skipping three. <laughs> but I mean, it, it is going to be in the center. I shouldn't say it's not going to be in the center. Eight's an even number. So um, I'm going to, I did two. I'm going to chain three, I'm going to skip these three stitches, sorry I get closer, I'm going to skip these three and I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet the last one. So you got two on that side, two on the far side and then your buttonhole in the center. Chain one, turn your work. Row 18. There is a stitch right before the hole. Oh, I split my yarn again. There we go. So into the hole we go, I'm not going to go into the chain of the hole, the chain, the three chains that I just did. Um, it's too nitpicky and I don't like that. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I am not going to yarn over. Boy, that's a habit. I'm just going to single crochet into the entire hole. I almost did it again. So I'm going to th put three single crochets into that hole and that makes up for the three that I've skipped that should be there and then single crochet your last two for a total of eight stitches. Chain one, last row, 19, you're just gonna single crochet all the way across. And if you have babies that are learning to walk, um, this is a good thing to have strapped to your stove because I know a lot of times a baby will try to pull himself up using that said towel hanging from your oven and it falls and then they smash their head off the oven. So, I mean, personally as a parent, I wouldn't allow my child to be near the oven doing that, but 
You know, they can get away from you so fast. So, you've done your last stitch. You're going to chain one just to make your knot. Pull that through. Cut that off. Continue to pull it through. Pull it tight. Like that. We're going to hidey ho that one somewhere. We don't need to hidey ho a lot of it. But some of it. So we'll just go straight across. Just weaving it in. And again, it's long because if you do wash this, you don't want you don't want your cord to unravel. So we're just going to go up, down, up and down in various places, weaving it. You're not going to sew this just like straight across. Like you need to weave it in. So now I'm just going to kind of go sideways and backwards. It's probably good. So pull your work out after you've done that. And you can just snip it off. There, now we just gotta sew on the button. Let's find a button. There's a purple button. We'll use a big purple button. Alright, turn your work around because you've just hidden that. And I've got a button, big purple button I'm going to put on there. Try to center it. So we had done initially the two stitches, skipped three, and then you had two on this side. So two stitches. So the three, so you know it's going to be even with your hole. So try to kind of get it somewhere in those three stitches. Come up with your yarn. Go back through the hole. Oops. There you have it. Like that. Flip it over. We're just going to tie this. Pull as tight as you can. And we're just going to snip. You can hide these ends if you wanted to, just to make your button a little more secure, but I think the knot is enough. I mean, I'm I'm going to snip low, but I don't want to get really that close to the knot. I mean, if it does work its way out in the washing machine, then you can always sew it back on. And there you have it. That is your towel holder. Let me get a towel. So this is the towel holder I made um, with an elastic. A little button. And a little button for my stove. So when I put this in, I literally just kind of pull down and, and suck it in and I just kind of leave it hanging any length. So the elastics work great. But for these, I would imagine you would fold your towel somewhat and just kind of flop it over the Like that. I would hold it decent hanging on your stove. So yeah, those are cute. 
See, everything's red. Everything's red in my kitchen. That's why I did one that was red with the elastic. And you, ha you get the same scalloped look. The hole's not as big because, I mean, this was an oversized elastic. The hole's not as big. And that's why I decided to buy the rings because the holes are bigger. But the elastics do work. They're very difficult. You've seen how difficult it was to double crochet around a solid ring. It's it's just as difficult to do this than starting with a magic circle and trying to double crochet inside of a magic circle when it just wants to twist and turn and so. I, but I mean, it's it's doable. It's doable, and and I just like the fact that it's pops open so wide however you can see like I put a lot in there enough to scallop it and you can still when it comes open you can see the elastic so um, but if you don't have anything else on elastics and you don't want to spend the money I think I got all of these plus the two I've used and the tree of life that I made so those rings came with it so three plus all of these um, I got for like $14.99 on Amazon so pretty cheap I think there's 16 here so under a dollar 16 loops in the set that you can buy and uh, it was under a dollar so but anyway there you have it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video.